welcome to our interview with Craig and Patricia Neal about their book, The Art of Convening, Authentic Engagement in Meetings, Gatherings, and Conversations. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming in. <laughs> We're thrilled Great. to be Thank here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to start by saying you had a third author as well who's not with us, but right. that is Cynthia Wold. That's correct. correct. Let's talk about how did you get started in the art of convening? What's the, what's the basis of this? Craig? Well, it, it, good, good question. We started... Uh, back 15 years ago and we became partners. Uh, we've been married for 30 years and we decided to start our business Heartland 15 years ago and the vision really was in the beginning to create opportunities for leaders, anyone who wants to step forward to make a difference in these times, that's a leader, okay. to um, provide resources and opportunities for them to navigate change in their lives and then through organizations. and. What we came to realize very, very quickly was that you could really tell a lot about any meeting, gathering, or conversation by just participating. And people were finding it really difficult to really have what we call authentic engagements together. Absolutely. So it's really <laughs> about authentic engagement. And um, so over the past 15 years, we've produced hundreds of gatherings. Uh, and we, conferences, national conferences, conferences and and different meetings with thousands of people that's and right. people kept saying, well how do you do what you do so well? Right. What is, you know, what's the magic of how you bring people together and we leave and we feel renewed, we feel energized, we've got I feel some, like we got somewhere. Got somewhere. Exactly. Finally. Exactly. Got some ideas. I see. So you were being brought in essentially as consultants to different organizations to help what we would call uh, facilitate a meeting with some outcomes. And so then people started coming to you over the years, like maybe pulling you aside and saying, I want to be like how you are for all of my organizational <laughs> I meetings. I want to have what she's eating, right. Well, exactly. exactly, because I work in a business setting and many meetings are clunky, I would say. Mm. And then there's this phenomenon that maybe you help people with, which is what needs to be said doesn't. And then yes. people talk offline. Right. Maybe there was eight people in the meeting and all that needed to come forward, but people are just sitting on their hands or is this appropriate? Am I gonna step on toes? <laughs> Do I wanna reveal this about myself? And then just two people meet outside of that in and it's hallway. not effective. So let's talk about that, Patricia. How have you helped teams with that? Well, that's a good question. Um, what we decided that we needed to do, because you would think that this would be native or people oh, yeah. would come and to our thought leader gatherings or any of our things and, uh, and, and go home and replicate. And we realized over many years that people would say, well, I don't really know what you've done. How did you do it? And so I would come home to Craig and say, Craig, we need to write the recipe. Oh. I need, I'm a really linear, introverted person. Give me step one, step I two, like give me the recipe, yeah. then I'll learn it, and then I'll make it my own. Yeah. And then, but first, we have to yeah. tell people what it is that we do. Right, our so you're our, helping them to go from being a, a meeting facilitator, because the language that you use is convener, yeah. a right. convener. And you know, the interesting thing is that there is no other book on convening. We're the very, very first one that we could find in, um, on Google or Amazon. Mm -hmm. And so very interesting, we're in, in a way creating a category. I mean, there's tons of books yeah. on meetings, great meetings and uh, facilitation and moderation and mediation, but none on convening. And what you said earlier is absolutely true. I mean, that's part of our business is working with, as consultants, when we come in and work with organizations. But what we found in, in producing our own thought leader gatherings, which we've been hosting every month for 13 years, is that people really want to engage on an authentic level, either in business or personally. Yes. And, and so what, we've, what we looked at in this crucible is 
what's behind it? What are the practices and the principles and what are the steps that one would take for a personal practice mm -hmm. in learning how to do that? And then what's the practical application in that engagement mm -hmm. that can really bring people to what we call a commitment to action that really has stickiness, that has commitment yes. and um, responsibility and accountability to the way forward. So. I love it. So it's not just touchy-feely, airy-fairy. This is to put something at the, at the as an outcome that's very real, that's very tangible. It's interesting you say touchy-feely, airy-fairy. Yeah. However, we say the soft stuff is the tough stuff. And oh. the soft stuff's about people. It's yeah. about how we interact. And that's generally what people go, well, I don't, you know, the soft stuff. It's really hard it's to scary. be real and scary yeah. sometimes to be really engaged with people at an authentic level. I mean, it, sometimes it takes a little bit of vulnerability to let your hair down, to I be do really agree. honest. I do agree, because my blood pressure is just <laughs> elevating, just even thinking about it right now. Um, I, you've mentioned a couple of times thought leader gathering. Yes. Patricia, what is thought leader gathering? Well, it was uh, the practicum for our work. As we okay. decided in 1998, one of the things we love to do is bring together people who, like you, are curious, interested in what's going on in the larger world, knowing that that enhances who they are in their own work. Mm -hmm. So we started identifying thought leaders within the communities, our communities in Minnesota and the San Francisco Bay Area, and bring them together around a topic every month and, and, real, and generate essential conversation. Right. And, and so that's the thought leader gathering. And what would be an example of a, of a topic at a thought leader gathering? Oh, anything from uh, collective wisdom to the rise of the middle class in China, uh, oh. diversity as a leadership competency, you know, any number of, of subjects. And the, real, the, the, the crux of it for me is, is the person who is speaking that we bring as our conversation starter. Mm -hmm. Because for us, leadership always sits at the nexus of leadership development and personal development. And so that leads us back to the book, which is the difference between being a convener and a facilitator, for instance, is to facilitate means to make easy, which mm. is critical, yeah. you know, to, that a facilitator shows up with fantastic skill sets and tools to bring a meeting along and create some uh, a, a, a planned path and a resolution and some action that mm -hmm. happens coming out of the meeting. Convening is what happens before and during the meeting of the person or the team who is bringing the people together, creating the invitation. What are you, what are you inviting people to come to. Yeah. You're inviting people to do more than just come and enact a couple of transactions mm -hmm. or a series of transactions. It always comes back to the relationships yeah. of the people who are gathering and the relationship of the person who's inviting the people to come to the gathering. And so with the, in the back to the thought leader gatherings, the conversation starter is a model of someone who is intentional about how it is they are bringing their leadership to their team or their community mm -hmm. or their organization. And the topic is just a great way <laughs> to bring people together. Yeah, to, to open the door to, open to the, the, door. the more what you say, authentic engagement. Well, I feel like what you're speaking to, it's so resonant now for these times and what I see going on in business. However, <laughs> you said you started this 13, years ago or something? The Thought Leader Gathering. Was yes. it lonely? Did you feel like <laughs> we are just stepping out to the edge of a cliff and we're hoping people, you know, that there's something there to grab onto? Let's talk about that. Well, in a way, if I might, uh -huh. um, I think we were following the horse in the direction it was going. Okay. I think what was happening 13 years ago in 1998, we went to a couple of corporations in the Twin Cities area and, and they said we don't know anybody in, uh, in other industries in this area. 
would you be willing to host a conversation around what it means to be a leader in these times and its effects on how we grow as an organization. Because we're navigating white water. We're navigating Ooh. white water change. And if we are going to replicate the same thing, you know the Einstein quote, yep. the definition of, being, of insanity is replicating the same thing over and over again. But you expect something different. You expect exactly. something different. And so wow. we're navigating wa white water, but what we really need to be navigating is transformation. And right. so can, we, can you help us pull together some conversations? And so it gave us an opportunity to exercise some of the principles and practices mm -hmm. of convening, mm -hmm. bringing people together. So it wasn't just the sit in a row, look at a, a, a presenter, an expert, have a download, do a Q&A, thank you very much, we're going exactly. home. Exactly. So what we did was we came up with this concept of engagement, what authentic mm -hmm. engagement through varying the different learning styles. So some of the learning styles are audio, some are participatory, mm -hmm. some are more kinetic. So mm -hmm. we have a four and a half hour experience in which we bring a conversation starter in and their role really is to just kick things off. Yeah. And then we bring people together to engage in a conversation with one another. And we have a set of principles that we use around conversation mm -hmm. and we alternate different um, meeting methodologies so mm -hmm. at the end people leave and they feel like wow I've had a real conversation of substance with a bunch of very interesting people yeah. because here's the crux of it and what we found in our years and years of meetings conferences I mean we've done a series of national conferences was there was so much wisdom in the room Yes. that never gets heard. And isn't that true at most meetings, oh, business yes. meetings? You hear from one person or a couple of people, or maybe it's supposed to be a team meeting, but the, you know, the extroverts the yes. always are the ones that have the first thing to say. And the or the boss. Or the boss. You know, if you feel like you're in a very, uh, what you call like a hierarchy. Right. Yes. You feel like, I don't want to say anything because right. I should just permit the boss to dominate. Exactly. 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 And yet, you hired those people for a lot of good reasons, yeah. not the least of which is their intelligence and that we would also say their wisdom. And oh. so to the thought leader gatherings, what we knew would be true if we created a format where all voices could be heard at one time or another during the day, we would be, one, encouraging people to use their voice, mm -hmm. that it's really critical in these days. A leadership principle for us is it's critical for people to learn how to speak their ideas, how to bring their wisdom forward. Yes. And so we practice that, it, it, and that is part of our, all of our meeting formats is that everyone gets the opportunity to speak, but that also then you encourage the people that you don't often hear from. Because there you, we were just in a meeting the other day with this really dynamic sales team, and, um, and we went around and had each person speak their idea. We, we had a, a presenting concept that we were all working, and, uh, and we asked everyone to speak their perspective and their wisdom. So we had a time for reflection. We had, we had told them that we were going to have them ask some questions and that they would need to be in a listening mode to, for each of their colleagues, mm -hmm. but also for what was being presented because they were going to be asked to speak. And, um, and when we got through, one of the women said, that was so powerful for me you think you've heard from me in most of the meetings, but you all go ahead and speak, and then I think, oh, well, everything's been said. You don't need to hear right. from me. Oh, I bet that happens a lot. It happens all the time. It happens a lot. Oh. And so, you know, so she never speaks, because she says, well, I don't need to. Everybody's yes. already spoken for yes. me. You know, why do you need to hear from me? And there's no time anyway, so I'm just gonna let you speak for me. Sounds like a Midwest <laughs> Humility. Well, this was California. This was California. So it's everywhere. It's everywhere. This is it's everywhere. It's exactly. everywhere. And instead, she had what her wisdom was just what was needed to yes. complete the conversation. But nobody would have known it if, if we hadn't asked her to. Well, of course, 
I have read your book, and I think what you're speaking to, that's been a very good principle for me to incorporate in meetings that I run. But it's different because we're used to this old model of, yeah, the extroverts, right. you know, the st strong voices speak up. But what I find when I pause in a lot of my meetings are teleconference and people different cities, different time zones, when I am willing to pause and sort of give the, make the whole group breathe for a second yes. to really get that person we haven't heard from to right. say something exactly. slows everyone down for a moment and then it's like that concept still waters run deep yes. yes all of a sudden this person we haven't heard from for two years i think what you're talking about they just delivered this gem and maybe they wouldn't have done that if i didn't now as exactly. a convener be really cognizant of bringing all voices in That's perfect. perfect i mean that what more and more people are meeting virtually. Yeah. So what we tried to do in the book is to create um, what we call the convening wheel, right? Yes, Which, let's, if you've let's read talk the book, about that, yes. Well, we've tried to create a book that talks about convening. Now, convening, if you're a convener, you're taking responsibility the way you are leading a meeting, either virtually or in person. So you're, the expectation is you are the meeting leader, right? Mm -hmm. And so if it's uh, the principles and the practices in the book are good whether you're face-to-face -face or virtually. Yes. And so seven years ago, we started the Art of Convening teletrainings. So we started t training people over the phone exclusively seven years ago. I went off to try and write, begin to write the book, and mm -hmm. I came out with this curriculum for a teletraining because I thought, well, we needed a skunk works. We needed some place to try out these principles. Mm -hmm. And I thought, so well. So the book wouldn't just be theory. Right. It would be practice. Yes, yeah, lots of practice. And so we wanted people from all over the world. And we wanted it to be cheap. So <laughs> the phone was a great part. So for seven years, we have been honing the skills of this over the phone when we've got 400 people that have come through the training. What we found was that there is a pathway and this wheel that starts at the heart of the matter. It's like, what's the purpose of the meeting? So right. if you're leading a meeting. The real thing. What's the real thing? Yeah. What do you, the question is, who am I in relationship to the people that I'm gonna be with? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But before we move too far off this subject, someone who's watching right now do you still deliver the, the training, oh, yeah. the Art of Convening training? Oh, yeah. How can people find out about this? You mean besides going to our website? Well, what's your website? Let's talk <laughs> about that. www.heartlandcircle, heart like your heart. Okay. Heart, and we're in the heartland. Right. Heartlandcircle.com. Excellent. Yeah. Terrific. And right. we have a whole series of trainings, yeah. and you can come in the for book. A, a free intro. And oh, in the Thought Leader Gathering, you would know you do those both in... Uh, Bay Area of California and Twin Cities, Minneapolis and yeah. St. Paul. Exactly. Right. Okay, great. Every yeah. other month. So yeah. we're doing them monthly. Excellent. Yeah. And then the trainings, we have uh, intros and then we have a core training and an advanced and train the trainer. So we're doing a whole series. And what a valuable skill Thank set you. to bring back yeah. to an organization. Oh. So, gosh. You heard it first here. <laughs> we're going to launch the Convening Institute in a couple of months. Yes, and Wonderful. it is here first. This is our first public announcement. Yeah. Oh, this is excellent. Yeah. And it will house all the work that we've been doing, including the books, the trainings. We've got a guild now of, of people who have done um, all our trainings. But it doesn't so. matter. You know, it'll be an open forum on, online, it'll, yeah. uh, yep. a, social, a social networking site where people can come and share their practices of convening their stories. It's, you know, to me, the difference or, or what's critical when you talk about what's at the heart of the matter is that every time two or more people gather, there's an opportunity for something to happen that didn't exist before. Right? Yes. So you, you, get, you, you run into somebody in the yeah. hallway at Wells Fargo or at, or at uh, the grocery store or, you know, I'm at my local bank or whatever and, and, um, and you decide, and you go, oh, you know, I've been meaning to talk to you <laughs> yes. about. Yes. Right. But you can take that same concept, that same principle to your regular meeting to say, wow, you know, I know we've been meeting for 10 years, 15, we all know each other really where, well, 
let's take it to another level. Yes. What if it weren't just that we're going to complete this agenda together? What if it we, we were going to consider that we really like each other? There might be something we, we, we could benefit by knowing each other in a slightly different way. So for instance, this, uh, a, a leadership team that we're, we work with at a local college, they realize that they want to have 15 minutes. They have a monthly or twice a month scheduled meeting. And they realize they want to start the first 10 or 15 minutes of every meeting with food, tea, coffee, whatever, mm -hmm. and informal chatter or talk where they connect. Connect. As people. As people. Yeah. Not and just then as professionals in a role, in a function. And then settle they sit into down. One yeah. Another. And then they sit down at the table and it's like Zoom. Now they really get down to business. Yeah. Because they've they've come into the room, they've eased their way in. The chatter means if I've connected with you, mm -hmm. you know, my my son who I left at daycare who was crying for me. Yeah. You know, and I bring that in the meeting, and that's got my... You're somewhere else. I'm somewhere else, yeah. and I'm not present. Mm -hmm. Let me get present with you, who I really respect. I do care about you. And is that touchy-feely? Well, maybe, but I just define touchy-feely as willing to be touched and to feel something. Okay, so I yeah. feel something. Yeah, and when you <laughs> mention this, I mean, I've worked in New York City in right. the music industry and entertainment, and then in Twin Cities, in a corporation. And I believe that the leader who brings that humanity and that that is felt and experienced by the people that are in their command, in their sphere, right. yeah. it's very effective. It's memorable. People it feel is. cared yes. for. They yep. feel like they're really part of a broader right. scene than just the tactical, or you used a great word earlier, the, the transaction. Yes. The transaction. Exactly. That's good. Let's talk more about the circle because a lot of what I got out of the book is you bring in a, not just a concept of circle, but you have people sit yes. in a circle. Right. Let's talk about that. About sitting in or is our concept? Just, yes. Or both. both. <laughs> okay. Um, the circle is perhaps the most efficient way that humans can meet to really communicate efficiently. Now, most people don't think that way, but if you think about it, if you're in a group of six or 10 or 20, and you sit in a circle together, everybody can see one another, mm -hmm. can hear one another, and there's a high propensity that you're not gonna multitask, Ooh. which is one of the great <laughs> challenges of most meetings, especially absolutely. virtual right now. Yeah, absolutely. Because everybody's you know, mm -hmm. yes. off doing this. <laughs> so, highly and efficient. Self-included. And there's a sense that you are peers. And something shifts when people feel ah. that they're included and they're peers. King even Arthur. Even if they aren't. Right? King, King Arthur's Arthur, the round UN. table. Yeah. Right, the UN. The UN yeah. is successor. I mean, okay. indigenous right. cultures use it all the time. I mean, we use the circle. If you think about it, if there's a bunch of people standing up and they don't have chairs and they say, okay, let's come together. They don't meet in a triangle or a square. Right. They circle up, right? Yeah. That's a right. natural. Or rows where they're looking at each other's, the back of each other's heads. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. right. That's not very So engaging. we do this yeah. in business yeah. meetings all the time. And sometimes people kind of go, oh, well. But then they go, yeah, this really is efficient. We can each see one another, hear one another. And there's a sense that when I speak, I'm being heard. Ooh. Well, we took that concept and we looked at it and we said, okay, what's embedded in here for convening? What's embedded in here that can inform the person who's going to convene? Mm -hmm. And I mentioned earlier the heart of the matter. So we take the concept and we say, okay, how do we take the beginning of a meeting, the very beginning, when the person's conceptualizing the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. What's the purpose? Then we move into what's the intent? How do we clarify the intent? Mm -hmm. Like this morning, you were probably, mm -hmm. you got up in the morning and you said, oh, okay, the heart of the matter here in my relationship with them is, now our intent is gonna be the design, what are we gonna do yeah. together, yeah. right? Then the invitation comes out, you invited us to come here. And here you are. And it was an integration <laughs> yeah. of your purpose and your intent, so we understood why we're here. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And then you sat down and you set some context with us. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do together? What's the form, the function, and all of that? So it's more common sense. And then you created this wonderful place for us to be. It's called a container. Mm -hmm. So the container is not only this studio that we're in, but the agreements that we have so that we yeah. know we can feel, okay, we know what the boundaries are so we can feel somewhat safe about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we create the container. And then we hear the voices. Now this is a lot of meetings mm. where you, a lot of times that's eliminated. Right. And so you don't get a chance to hear a check-in or what people are thinking. So we're absolutely when you're planning a meeting. Yeah. What do people think? You know, just ask people what's going like on. Yep. A simple check-in. Mm -hmm. Then that allows us. Now we're going around this wheel, which I think you're going to show. Yes. Is we are still pretty much at the early part of any meeting. Hearing right. This the voices. is just the runway. Exactly. To get onto the freeway. Yeah. The <laughs> next part. The next three aspects are essential conversation, creation, and a commitment to action. Mm. If all those components are really integrated by the convener, then you're allowed to have this natural conversation or in the meeting. It might be about accounting practices. It could be yeah. about whatever it is. Yeah. But there's this sense of, oh, I'm in the game now. You've asked me to participate. I know what's going on here. So there's a high chance that something is going to be created that hasn't happened before. That's the creation part of the wheel. And then the creation part might be 75% of any engagement that you enter into. Okay. Yeah. And it allows something new to emerge, something that's never, ever happened before. But mm -hmm. you see it that way. Mm -hmm because you've created the seed bed, if you will, this uh, way to, to really move forward as a group so that when you complete the whole process, which is a commitment to action, which is that outcome, that hard stuff that people like, what are we going to do together? How are we going to be? Are we really committed? Are you really committed to the way forward? Are you committed to the yeah. way forward? If we have that, then people can feel, wow, we really did something together. So that's basically the thinking that's in the book that we created but now together. Now here's the thing. A lot of people don't necessarily want to be creative. <laughs> right. They want or know that they want. Or know that yeah. they want to be creative because you can't predict where it's going to lead. And so a lot of times meetings get set up and you go boom, 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 boom and you know that somebody's going to take an action here, action here, action mm -hmm. here, action here, and you're done. And that is mm -hmm. containable, and that is predictable. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that that's either what they need or that's all they have time for. So this is actually, can be quite risky, but here's increasingly where we're seeing the payoff for taking the chance, taking the risk to show up with a different kind of leadership. We, we think of convening as a leadership capacity. Yeah. So you step forward using your social capital. So people trust you, Lori, and say, Lori's a leader that if she says, let's try something new, I'll consider it because I trust Lori. Mm -hmm. And so we just say, try, tr consider that you carry, each of you as a leader, carry a considerable amount of social capital. And you can go to your people and say, Let's just try something new. You know, what we've got yeah. is good, but good can be the enemy of great. Mm -hmm. ooh. So, ooh. one, I borrowed that. Somebody That's else. very, <laughs> very cool. Uh, and I forget who it was, I'm sorry. But, um, you know, but could we do something a little better together? And where we're seeing the real payoff in, is in our con increasingly multi-generational -gener and diverse cultures. At the oh, end of yes. meetings, people will come up to us and say, do you know, this is the first meeting I've been in where not only, you know, in my country, we take time to find out about each other. Condition, right. We, we take time to find out about each other, what's going on in our lives, 
and in and, and each other's lives. How is your grandmother doing? Is your grandmother okay today? And then we get down to business. Get but down to the business. First, yeah. I need to know who I'm doing business right. with. I love it. And so we have people from other cultures come up to us to say, it's the first meeting in the United States that I've ever been in where it's incorporated the qualities of the way that we do business in my country. I can completely see that. But it's, then, it's very, very powerful. It's very powerful. And then, but then, you know, the Gen Xers, or not the Gen Xers, the... Um, the different generations the multi, that are in the workplace, right? right. The, it puts the, everyone the millennials, in. for instance, yeah. that people will say, "Well, they're tuned out. Well, they're not. They're not connected. They're." It's a way to bring the, to level the playing field, to bring all the voices forward. And when people feel like their voices are being asked for, and their opinion is being asked for, they do engage. Yes, they do I participate. Do, I do agree. You know what I'm talking about. I do about. agree. Well, it's a great book. And I know how Thank busy you. the two of you are. Thank you so much for coming in mm. to Thank talk you. about it. It's been really fun. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Yeah. This is Lori Kriever signing off from our interview with Craig and Patricia Neal. We've been talking about their work in the art of convening. I would like to invite you to read a book. It could change your life. And let's encourage our children to do the same. Thank you.